started Postgres, not a bad thing, but not needed for this. Um, so I'm going to bore you guys with a little bit of PowerPoint, and then we'll go from there. And I'm going to be operating the slides. OK. And this is my son, Simon. He's co-inventor on a lot of these things. Hi. And I came up with the, with the idea for this, okay. you which can just, we're going to talk You don't have to tilt about. down to talk, OK, bud? Because you know. look really funny when you do that. OK. Um, so basically, the idea came from I was playing in a duo with another guitar player. And I was playing bass on some stuff and guitar on some stuff. And I was like, you know, it would be really nice if we could just play two guitars and have some bass, right? And uh, next slide. This is not what you want me to go to the next slide. OK, I will. Um, so as the slide says, the um, problem with the guitar is basically it plays in a certain register, right? And you want to get that bottom end. How do you get it? Well, you bring a bass player along and well, yeah, some of my bass player friends are, you know. Well, bass what players. about if you don't have a bass player? Exactly. Good point. So, possible solutions. You could build a pedal board. Anybody have a pedal board, a uh, like organ pedal board at home? So, built one of those two years ago. They're great, but it's another chunk of equipment you got to carry with. Yeah. And it occurred to me that when you're playing a guitar, you're basically not using your thumb for much of anything, right? So, back of this guitar, there's a sensor. And when you fret the guitar, your thumb follows along with you. So, Dad, the amp. So I said, hey, I could build this thing. And it would not require um, me to actually learn how to play guitar differently. And if you've ever tried to play, uh, <laughs> if you ever tried to play Rush with a pedal board and a guitar, OK, you understand that um, your brain can only handle so much. Um, okay, well. So um, basically, that was the idea. And um, the solution we came up with was to use the back of the guitar. So um, right now, there's a single sensor on here. But by design, there can be two or, or more. But two would basically be pretty good for it. So went to work on it and decided, OK, let's try and make this idea happen. Um, there are a couple of ways to do it. Um, that's a resistive sensor. You could do capacitive. You could do pressure. You could, you know, you could put a camera and watch where your thumb is, right? Um, so I opted for what I think is sort of the simpler solution. Um, but along with using a resistive sensor comes a couple of things, right? One is basically there's a on and off that you need to have that you don't really get with a resistor. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook the thing up to the pedal. So um, this is hot off the press, OK? Um, on Thursday night, I was soldering up the third prototype about 20 minutes away from being done, and I blew out the uh, microcontroller. I have no idea how. So let's say three hours of soldering down the tubes. Um, and panic ensued. Yep. Um, but and I, I, I got it together. Yeah, and when I heard about it, when Dad picked me up from school, I was like, phew, that was close. He was disappointed. So, so um, basically, the, uh, the pedal that's right here now has two inputs, one for one sensor, one for another. It's taking a reading of the analog on there, and then the Arduino is doing some magic with it. Um, so I'm going to plug in the guitar here quick. Um, and as some of you know, there was an analog. Th this is a amp with some analog stuff in it, as in like a spring reverb. So um, this is a combination of analog to digital to analog. And so the pedal is basically. USB powered. Um, for now, what we're going to do is run it off of my laptop. And I think it's better to do the demo first while it might still be working. And then yeah. we'll talk about it. And, right? and hopefully, so it'll still be working by the end. You'll notice the display lit up. And he won't fry the circuit again. <laughs> he knows his dad. Um, yeah. So, See what we can do here. 
All right. Right? Um. So it demos, which is always good. And um, so, thank you. So Simon, why don't you tell them about some of the challenges we have with the sensor and, and what the sensor is and how we actually deal with it. Well, what we do, so what we started with is we did that and then how do, and then you ask, how did you, how did you program the the sh the sensor to have the frets and to so you can pl actually play it and so you know where you have to play and so you can actually even program it without doing a lot of guessing so what did we do how did we solve that problem so dad you keep talking <laughs> while I pull up a program. Okay. So we we went and we so we uh, put it on the guitar and then we got that the serial monitor, which Dad should be putting up any. Just second. let it run. Let it run. Oh. Let it run. Let it run. Sorry, dude. It's loading the program. So right now it's loading a program into the pedal. That'll just tell us yeah. the, the analog value of the sensor. Um, okay. Dad, why don't you? Hopefully, it's not going to override this screen resolution. All right. So what we're going to do quick is we are going to kill this and change the program. Uh, live programming is always dangerous. Yeah. Um, so let's see if I can not break it. Hopefully, he doesn't break it. All right. So I'm going to take out the... Um, one of the things I've learned is to build yourself some good tools. Um, when you're dealing with hardware and software, it's good to know that it's not the hardware or it's not the software because the problems can hide. So when I, I switched from the broken Arduino to the working Arduino, I swapped the transmit and receive pins between the two boards inside the pedal. Now, yeah. having done this before and spent two hours trying to figure out the problem, it took me five minutes this time to be like, you know what? I think. It's the wrong um, You thing. know what lesson that teaches you? Learn from your experiences. And don't spend, and don't spend two hours on w working on the thing when the same problem happened and it took two hours and you figured it out. So right now what we're doing is we're scanning six different analog inputs on the Arduino. And I believe this is on A0. So it should be. Um, changing the value as we go up. And what Simon was talking about before is we have to basically split that into ranges and map them into notes because um, this is basically a continuous analog signal. And one of the things that came up in doing this project was I realized the fretboard on a guitar is actually an analog computer. Think about it. It computes. And it does a stepwise transform from a range of frequencies into a step set of frequencies. So strangely enough, guitar is a computer. Um, so basically, we've got this analog signal, and we have to map it into a range of notes. And one of the other things, what did we have to deal with? Remember? How did we do it? Huh? How did we set it up? Where did you put your finger and, and when we read it? Uh, on the f on the fret? Right. But the problem is, is if you just pick the transition from one um, position to another, like where the fret is, when you put your finger on there, it's really, you know, my th I don't know about you, but I got big fat thumbs, right? So sometimes it's a little high, sometimes it's a little low, and the note re-triggers and it bounces back and forth. So we created a dead zone inside the code that says if you put your finger right in this zone of about plus or minus 10, it won't do a note. Um, another one of the challenges was, how do you convert from, so I mean, you can see what's running here, right? It's kind of wobbling around like at th three. And you put your finger on there. Now 
it's saying 370, but if you're a guitar player, sometimes you take your thumb off and sometimes you do a gliss, right? So now we have to convert, you have to build a state model which says no note playing, okay, pressed, pressed, unpressed, pressed, stayed pressed, moved to somewhere else. What do I do, okay? That was like six hours of programming to finally get that whole mess to work. Um, it's a lot less clear because you're used to sort of the way switches work in things. So part of that, um, that challenge was trying to figure out, okay, how do, we, how do we map that state model in? Dan, what? Hold on. Huh? See if the Mac's going to play games with us. It's not. Oh, so good. This is the sensor we use. It's basically um, a really cool resistive sensor that actually is designed to go inside of medical devices. It's designed to be, um, they use it to retrofit um, positional uh, actuators and stuff. So, retrofit um, what a what actuators? Okay, my sidekick. Um, so think of it as you've got a hydraulic piston and you want to make it so you can tell the position of it. Okay. That's what these things are actually designed for and they just happen to work really good with finger touching. The other cool thing is that the sensor is about 10 bucks. So it's actually pretty cheap. The other thing that's really amazing is they work really, really well um, for using your finger on. I was, I was really surprised. Um, and that shows you sort of the diagram of how they're laid out. It's basically a sandwich with a little space in between. You press down and it gives you the, the resistance um, that you want. Now, Dad. ignore that. That's another prototype. Um, can you go to the next one? Okay. So most of you guys are familiar with the Arduino. Um, one of the benefits of using the Arduino is that there's like 17 different form factors available. So we started out and this is along with this um, is basically prototype number one. It's a little big, okay? Um, uh, tips for Arduino guys. Any of you guys know what this board is here? The one with the cables coming out of it? If you don't, you should. It's called a Grove connector. It's a JST four pin thing. Um, company called Seed, S-E-E-E-D Studio makes them. It's uh, super cool because uh, things plug in and pull out and you don't lose wires or anything -E 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 else. S-E-E-E-D? Yep, it's misspelled. Um, so you should get that. Any, how many of you guys know what DuPont wire is? You should. This is the key. This is the key to not losing your mind soldering because um, this is about a buck, okay? And on both ends of it, it'll have pins or it'll have a female or you can get a male and a female. Um, it's super helpful because it also plugs right into the the pin headers on the Arduinos and other boards. Um, so if nothing else, go get yourself some of those. Yeah, especially if you're really clumsy and you tend to burn yourself. Yeah, like Dad. Um, I have a soldering burn from three weeks back still. So this was number two. This was uh, prototype number two. Um, so we went from that size CPU to that size CPU and actually went from uh, that was the blown circuit, right? Yeah, this size soundboard down to a soundboard that's about this small. So that's how we were able to get it into the pedal. Um, next slide. Okay. Um, there's a chip out there called a VS1053, I think it is. It's really slick. The best part about it is the chip is like a buck a piece. The worst part about that's it is cheap. you can't get a board for under about 25 bucks with that chip on it, and all the boards do is pull the wires out to the headers. So if somebody finds a cheaper one, please let me know because it's really annoying that it's 25 bucks um, to just basically have the, the pins pulled out in an SMD um, chip to solderable headers. Next. The display on this guy is a $6, uh, 128 uh -oh. by 64 Sorry. OLED, okay? Um, <laughs> it's really cool. Two wires to program it over I2C. Right now it's not really doing that much, but um, I like them, they're pretty cool. Oops. So here's our first, no, you stay there. Here's our first proof of concept. Um, I don't know if you can see that there's packing tape dun, dun, um, dun, dun, dun. holding it to the back of the guitar. Um, I'm proud of that because that to me says proof of concept, okay? Anytime you use duct tape or packing tape. It's um, proof of concept. Okay. 
So the next thing we did was decide, okay, let's, how are we going to build this thing? Um, and uh, picked up a Hammond box, which is sort of the standard guitar pedal stomp box, and started wiring it together. And here that's we are. That's me. Yep, that's my buddy, um, basically helping out to test it and um, also giving good ideas back. How many of you guys have kids? How many of you do projects with your kids? You need to do projects with your kids. They're amazing because they don't have a filter. Yeah, and it's so, so they, fun for the kids, too. If something seems dumb, they call it out. And if you're missing something or there's a great idea, they, they don't know you shouldn't be able to do stuff or you, you know, shouldn't and, do stuff. And it's really, really fun for the kids. So, Coming from a real kid here. Yeah, he is a real kid. Um, so the beta, which is really more of an alpha, is using the Arduino Here's Nano. George Washington. Okay? which is basically smaller than the size of a quarter. Um, functionally, it's pretty much the same electronics as the Uno. The only downside is they actually move some pins around on you, so it gets, you kind of have to figure out where they move things to. Um, next. Um, so coding-wise, there were a couple of things that we needed to do. Um, we needed to be able to read the sensor quick enough to play music. and. Um, Arduinos are fast, but they're not super fast. And sampling takes time. Looked at doing this with interrupts. The problem is, is how do you get a resistor to cause an interrupt, which is a digital? That would have meant putting some outboard electronics to convert the analog signal to a digital signal to then trigger the interrupt so that it could read the analog. So those of you who are going to ding me for not making it interrupt driven, I have a good reason for not doing that. Um, so basically, it's just a giant polling loop, right? Reads it, sees if anything changed, transforms it to figure out what the MIDI note is, sends it out. How many of you have programmed MIDI? Where's my mouse? How many of you have programmed RS-232? You've programmed MIDI. Okay. MIDI is basically just RS-232 at 31,250 baud, and instead of 12 volts, it's 5 volts. Okay. Um, so all that money you pay for these MIDI boxes to plug into computers is really, you know, somebody's making a great profit off of us. But the benefit of that is, no, stop doing it. Stop doing it. Um, it's actually a pretty easy protocol to understand. The downside is, is they tried to make it really compact. Oops. So it's two byte or three byte messages, and they use the top bit in bytes to mean things. So. When you start looking at the protocol, it's a little goofy, and then you realize, okay, so there's 16 channels of MIDI, which is basically four bits, right? And then they use another part of the byte to tell you whether it's a command message or a data message. Um, ultimately, there's libraries out there that do it. Um, so we had to basically sample it 50 times a second, at least, be able to detect the state model that's behind the um, pushing and moving and stuff send data to the sound module and drive the display occasionally and read a couple controls. So right now, um, I'm going to load a different program. So let me. Is it the bass program? No, it's So the program I'm going to load right now is basically just going to show you um, what the board in here is kind of capable of doing in terms of um, sound. So, um, like I say, the chip is like a buck 25 in quantity 20, so it's pretty cheap. But it has built into it a whole bunch of, um, I mean, it's basically what's on a lot of sound cards and computers. And I think it'll do 64 note polyphony. That's better. But I want to impress them with the bass. So what I'm doing is switching through some of the instrument sounds. Dude, you're blasting my ears. That's better. Anyone want to play Minecraft? Just kidding. So. Can you 
turn it off, please? Thank you. Okay, so basically the sound chip is capable of doing a lot of stuff. The other thing that's kind of cool about this pedal is it actually is a stereo out pedal. So um, the chip also supports um, reverb and a bunch of other effects that I haven't turned on yet. Um, mm. Let me see, I think we're going back to here. So we're gonna load back up the um, program that basically runs it. While I'm doing this, okay, you know, playing, playing guitar and working with him on it, um, Simon's a cello player. He plays a little guitar, but he's mostly a cello player, right? So. Should I get, where is the program for just it? Just let it go. I think I turned this down. Um, leave it alone for now, okay, thanks. Dad, there's a slide for this. I know, but I don't want to pull the slide up right now, okay? All right, so let me make sure my program is running here. That note tells me it just reset this, or that click tells me it reset the soundboard. That's a good thing. So when it doesn't make noise, I get nervous. All right, so right now what you're seeing is basically the um, output from the sort of state machine. So it should be saying, so. I'm going to turn up the amp a little bit here. All right, that's a little too much bit. Now, let's say you're a jazz player, right? So you want to play. You're not a bar chord player, right? You want to play some open chords? It's possible to do. It's a little trickier. A is a little bit hard. But you can always reprogram that, right? Um, <laughs> the trickiest part of this whole thing has been trying to figure out how to engineer playing an open chord, right? Because on the back of the guitar, you've got the headstock, which Luckily enough, the sensor seems to tolerate. So what I did with this one is programmed it so that if you, so you're pressing basically up here, and it works. Um, your guitar may vary. Dad. So Simon said to me, he goes, Dad. Dad, Dad the program. OK, why don't you come here? Dad, the program. No, nope, just come here. Take, yes. your, take your thing. And Simon said to me, Hey, Dad, can't we take that sensor and just make an instrument without any strings? This is where the kid's asking great questions. Yep. So we did. So this is Simon's design for something we decided to call the semi, which is semi the bass. stringless electronic musical instrument. Um, Dad, where did these plugs go? We can't. So this one has basically a single sensor on it, as you can see. And on the back, this one actually runs to a MIDI module. It doesn't actually have a soundboard on it right now. So unfortunately, we didn't bring that with. But he designed it. Dad, can't we use that soundboard? No, because it doesn't have a, the right cable for it right here. <laughs> I told you before he left. So this brings up some other interesting uh, problems, right? Um, this is not a discrete fretted instrument, right? Yeah. Right? So what's the right. difference on a cello? This cello. sort of is like cello. Cello does glissando, but this just fretted. So with this, the downside of the MIDI protocol is it's very much sort of discrete note oriented. Um, too much spring reverb. Um, <laughs> Uh, oh, You've been come defeated. On. <laughs> um, so for this, the programming is a little different. We actually have to do uh, pitch bends to go from one note to the other to the other. Simon, stop. Aww. Okay. 
Um, so this one's another um, idea in the making. He did the design on it. Okay, and this is where I believe you have to listen to your kids. I wanted to make it look like a real cello, and he's like, no, Dad, I want it to be like angular and cool, and I was like, okay. Because it's right. not a cello. It's a your it's fretted. We'll let you do it. Um, B, it doesn't have strings, C, blah, 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 D, blah, 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 so on, so on. Okay. <laughs> so um, that's basically the, the idea. Um, any questions? Anybody want to play it? Come on, somebody come up and play it. I dare you. All right, we got, oh, here we go. We have a live. All right. So the sensor right now um, is. No, see, uh, the, the point is, is, the point is, is that if you can play bar chords, you can pretty quickly figure out where to hit. Now the tricky thing is, different people play with different thumb positions. So basically, it has to be calibrated. And um, I'll. I'm just pleasing it. No, you need to stop fiddling, or the guys are going to take you away. <laughs> Come um, on, Dad! I'm just freezing it. So this right here, uh, hopefully you guys can see this. Is the screen still frozen? No, I didn't. I didn't okay. Think I froze so. It. Basically, all we have is an array of integers that are the values that we want to be where the frets are. And um, I, I use that analog um, reading program to figure out what the values were and just manually type them in. The funniest thing is, is that um, 20 minutes before we started the talk, I started playing the guitar, and the pitch coming out of the thing was completely screwed up. And I went into panic mode. And I no, OK? <laughs> <laughs> I thought, oh, geez, what did I do with the code? So I started recalibrating it, get about 90% of the way through recalibration, and it starts giving me the old values. So right now, the problem is it's connected through analog cables. And these are basically um, three-pin micro uh, mini plugs. So basically, I think the mini plug got a little bit of resistance and a little capacitance, threw the whole thing off. Um, so I just jiggled it and went back. Um, <laughs> so, so I learned a little bit that, um, you know, really th the best design would be to sort of send the digital down to here from there. But for now, it works. Anybody else want to come up and play in any other questions? I have. And the, the whole design. Okay. You, you, you need to sit and, and relax. Um, Why do I get to play it? You can play, play. You can play when we're done. Okay. Um, there's, I've actually got a couple of designs. One is that there's two sensors on the back. One will be for the lowest note, and one will be the next one up, so that you can basically change from position one to position two bar chords. Ooh. Or you can, if you want to play polka, you can do that. Doom, 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 doom. Right. Um, I actually have another design that has six of them on the front, like strings. Okay. Um, uh, you haven't do? gotten to that yet, but technically, oh, no it's, wonder. it's just the same code <laughs> with a little bit of tweaking. Because um, how are you gonna how are you gonna deal with um, multiple notes at the same time and handling when they release? Okay, so it, it's probably not that hard. I haven't gotten to it yet, but the the figuring out how to turn the state model of press, slide, release, and all that stuff in the MIDI notes took me, it actually isn't that hard once you stop and you just walk through it in your head and you write it down. But if you don't do that and you're just trying to code it, it's a nightmare. Because you, can't, you can't realize why it's not doing what you want it to do. So after I farted around with it for four hours and couldn't get it to work properly, I sat down with a piece of paper and said, OK, push your finger on. Push, you know, what, are the, you know, what are the possible things that go on and what should it do? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure it would be. Uh, and, and this code hasn't been tightened up at all. Um, and it's able to perform really fast. Um, Dad, are we almost done? Yes. <laughs> He's bored. Uh, any other questions? Does the Arduino have any, like, specific memory that you can, like, calibrate it by? 
It does. You can write to EEPROM. Yeah. So um, Arduino is fascinating, right? Because it, it actually, most of them have like 2K of RAM. They've got 20 or, or they've got 32 or 64 or 256 or 512 of flash that you can store your program in. But the actual dynamic RAM in it, the SRAM in it, is actually pretty small. It's only about 2K, which creates a few issues because um, some of the code, I've created arrays of things to talk about what instrument, like the name of the instruments, right? So you've got 128 instrument names. And I didn't make them consts. I'm, and they basically sucked up all the RAM. But you make them a const, it puts it in flash, and you know, because you know you're not going to change it. So there's a few little dumb things like that that once you screw it up once, you're like, oh yeah, it's only got 2K of RAM. What was I thinking? But it does have EEPROM that you can write to also to store that. So you wouldn't have to calibrate. You wouldn't have to hard code it either. Obviously, there should be a routine where you you know push a button on the pedal and you go into calibrate mode and you go boom 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 and it's done instead of boom read type boom you know. So. It's a great question. OK, I, two things. Uh, first, I wanted to announce that I have a meetup group. You can go to meetup.com. It's called Art Coaching City. And if you like the type of stuff that's going on today, the type of stuff we're into, and uh, you want to join. You know, it's the, thing, the question I have is really about what you just said. I happen to have my son right here. This is Hannah. OK. He's Hannah. Hi. And I love to do projects like this with him, but it never seems He's 10. Yeah. So we have the same problem. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Here's what Kay. I learned. Um, it has to be something they're interested in. Dad, he said, you said I was answering this question. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll let Simon answer. Uh, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> Well, the, well, the main thing is to kind of stick to my interests, and occasionally maybe have breaks. Some, sometimes, sometimes you just stall and do another little pro tiny little project, and then go back to the project. If if I if I'm not interested in it, just just keep just to keep your son interested. It really depends. So yeah. I'll give you an example. We're working on this. Dad wants to get this done. Simon says, hey, Dad, can we build an instrument? So we stop and go off on a tangent, OK? Mm. Um, because to a large extent, um, if, it, if they're really not interested, then it's you know beating them with a stick to keep them on the project, right? But if it's something they like to do, yeah. then it's easy. The other thing is, is um, I have him, I, I think of it as um, he's both the customer and he's the development team. So it's like, what do we want to do? How are we going to do it? How are we solving the problem? Um, and generally, I make him do every piece of a project, but I don't make him do all of. So if we were painting a room, I'd make him paint part of a wall, and then I'd paint the rest of the wall, right? Because it's a, you know, dads can finish the job kind of thing. Um, but he does the pieces of it, right? So, um, you know, this is basically we, we recessed a bunch of potentiometers in the back of a piece of wood, right? Well, you get to use a chisel, okay? Because it's a round and a square thing, right? So, um, basically, I just, I, I'm, when he doesn't want to work on it anymore, then we shelve it for a while, okay? Um, and then when we come back to it, you have to be kind of tolerant to that, okay? But I mean, we all work with people who can't stay focused on anything. Why would we think a 10-year-old can, right? <laughs> so that, that, you know. Yeah. That's another good idea. I chain him to the treadmill and turn it on. Uh, no, actually, I just watch YouTube videos. <laughs> while running, while on, the running on the treadmill. While on the treadmill, though. Yeah, because yeah, if they don't, if they don't burn it off. Yeah. Any other question? Yeah. 
Huh? What? Yeah. Are you talking about a stick or a person? It's a it's an instrument that you play by hammering on. Oh. Okay. An ersatz. Yeah. And also then highly electronic, you know, like a, one of those I-88 actual guitars. I mean, you could just. Uh, yeah. I, I agree with you. So but, uh, the. Okay. Hey. So, yeah, I think uh, the, the other thing to think about is I, I've got about four guitar players right now that I'm working with to um, beta test, alpha test it, right? And so all these guys are better guitar players than I am, fantastic guitar players. And every one of them says, yeah, I don't really want it to do that. <laughs> They're like, I want, uh, can, you, can you, so part of it is, um, I've also got some force sensitive resistors, which are different than this. This is position sensitive. Um, same resistors on the front of the guitar now become something I can tap and I can use to do percussive sounds. Or, um, because, I mean, this is, basically this is really taking an analog sensor and turning it into a keyboard, right? Like a type in keyboard. So anything you want it to do, it can do. Um, one of the other things I've been working on software wise is that um, right now it's basically single trigger, right? But there's no reason why this can't be triggering a patch or a, a loop, right? Or take a walking bass pattern and start out here and every time I tap it, move through the pattern. And then when I move to a different chord, reset it, okay? I mean, it's all simple software stuff. Just got to get around to doing it, okay? Um, and then, you know, one of the guys wanted it on the back of the guitar and on the front of the guitar. Um, and I'm like, yeah, you know, um, we can do it. And then keyboard player guy said, well, I don't want it on a guitar. He I wants it on the keyboard? keyboard. Right. And basically, so the, the reason oh. why this is on here right Oops. now with, with uh, uh, packing tape is because I haven't figured out where I want to position it yet, so I'm trying it out here. But the back of these things actually has an adhesive on them that works really good. Doesn't seem to mar the finish of a guitar. Um, your mileage may vary depending on how expensive your guitar is. I would suggest maybe you test it. Um, and it actually sticks pretty good once it's down. I've actually pulled it off, repositioned it two or three times, and it stayed in place. But this is a, a brand new sensor. and. Basically, I wanted to tape it on and see how I liked it there. It doesn't seem to even get in the way. The packing tape peels right off the sensors. Have I tried gaffer's tape? Yeah. Um, I haven't because I worry about um, it's really sticky, meaning it's hard to pull away. And I'd be worried about yeah. it, it um, not wanting to separate from the sensor, OK? Whereas packing tape, it, it, it's more. It's not quite as sticky, right? Um, any other questions? All right, um, if you want to come up and fiddle with it, come on up. Well, I was going to add one other question. What about bringing all the electronics inside to like power? Uh, um, uh, no, it's just part of why I'm building. So I'm, I'm planning on doing a Kickstarter on it. Um, so um, if you're interested, come up, give me your, your email address, and I'll, I'll send you information on it. Yes, you, sir, in the back. You could. Okay. Dad. I'm a, I actually don't. So I've been a musician for about Dad. 30 years. And whenever I play, I never use a Mac or a computer or anything else because they always screw up. I, I'm a firm believer in dedicated hardware. I have a MIDI module that I bought 17 years ago. Okay. That still works and still sounds great. And it works great. Okay? I haven't had I've to upgrade the firmware. I haven't had to reboot it. I haven't had to get a new hard drive for it or anything else. Um, but and that's amazing. To your, to your point, all that information that was going out through the serial port that we were debugging, it, you know, it can be easily changed into whatever. It's just serial data. So, yeah, you could just directly go into a Mac and trigger the sounds in a Mac or whatever your computer preference is. Um, so, as I was saying, part of what I'm doing is, is um, planning on doing a Kickstarter around this and trying to make it so that it doesn't have to be invasive in the guitar, because most of my guitar friends are nutty about their guitars. Um, 
Aww. All right, who has children? Um, so I wanted to be able to take the same sensor, put it on different instruments, put it on guitars, Dad. basses. I also have a, I, I've Dad. tried this out. Take a fretless bass, take one of the strings off, take that sensor and put it on the top. Now you have an acoustic bass or an electric bass and you have a synth string you can play, okay? So, you know, all this kind of goofy stuff you can do. Now you could do it on a fretted bass, but I don't know how well the sensor would stay down, okay? So that's why the fretless. Um, and I'm actually right now designing a cello that will be those sensors and a uh, four strings that are basically bowed Dad. like a regular cello, but are a, a way of, trans of uh, translating the bowing motions into digital information to go along with the, the position of your fingers on the, on the strips. Designing it, haven't fabricated it yet, haven't started fabricating it, and, and he'll be the, the primary tester on that one. So Cause I, cause I play cello. Cause he's a cello guy. Any other questions? All right, thank you. <laughs>